What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we are talking about collagen peptide supplementation and its effects on connective tissue synthesis. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. A new study came out looking at collagen peptide supplementation at 15 grams per day in resistance trained young men and its effects on connective tissue synthesis. And they were using a pretty new method for measuring protein synthesis using deuterated water, which I think is super cool. Usually when we measure protein synthesis and we're using labeled amino acids, we can only look at like really short periods of time, but using deuterated labeled water allows us to look at it over the course of days and even weeks. And so we can get an idea of what longer term rates of protein synthesis are. So in this case, they were looking at protein synthesis rates in connective tissue after giving collagen peptide supplementations at 15 grams a pop. This is a dosage in human randomized control trials that they've shown kind of improvements in more subjective markers, looking at like skin elasticity, you know, so the, some of these things are objective, but are also pretty subjective in the way they're measured. It's not like you're, you're getting a really hard number. And a lot of these studies were sponsored by collagen supplementation companies. They had men resistance train for a week and looked at the rates of connective tissue synthesis with either placebo that didn't have any calories or with collagen peptide supplementation. And they found that there was no difference between the two. Now, I was recently on the Huberman Lab podcast and I talked about how I'm very in the middle about collagen. I used to be very, I say it had no benefits, but again, there are randomized control trials showing some improvements in things like skin elasticity and uh, pain management, those sorts of things. But it also doesn't really make sense from a mechanistic perspective. And again, we're not seeing increases in connective tissue synthesis. And this is actually the second study to show this. Both of these, by the way, from really, really good labs. Really good labs. This is out of Luke Van Loon's lab, which is a legend in protein metabolism. And I believe the other one was out of Stu Phillips' lab also a legend in protein metabolism. So I give a lot of weight to these studies because they're from very, very credible labs that have consistently shown over decades that they produce some of the highest quality research in protein metabolism. So how to reconcile all this? Well, on the pro side, collagen is 33% glycine. So one out of every three amino acid residues in collagen is glycine. Another like 20% is proline and hydroxyproline. And those amino acids are used because collagen is a triple helix in structure. So you think about DNA is a double helix. So this is a triple helix. And these amino acids are thought to be in such a large quantity because they stabilize the hydrogen bonding cross bridges between the three helixes. How's that for some science on you? So, the idea is when you supplement with collagen, which has a lot of these amino acids, it is going to increase the synthesis of collagen because you have more of these substrates. And indeed, in the studies where they give collagen supplementation, in this study, they saw increases in plasma levels of glycine and proline, but they didn't see increases in connective tissue synthesis. Then the other part I have trouble with is people think when you take in collagen, it works because that collagen is just gonna wind up in your collagen. That is not how that works. Because the process of digestion and metabolism, you are not getting intact collagen into your system. And by the way, if you did, your cell wouldn't even be able to take it up. What happens is that collagen is hydrolyzed and broken down into its constitutive amino acids. Because as that collagen protein, because it is a protein, and like any protein, as it enters the stomach, you have high concentrations of hydrochloric acid, which is gonna cause that three-dimensional structure of that protein to begin to unfold, it's called denaturation. Then you have pepsin and pepsinogen, which are gonna begin chopping those polypeptide sequences up. Then when it hits the duodenum of the small intestine, you have proteases like trypsin, chymotrypsin, that are gonna come in and chop it up into basically like one, two, and three amino acid sequences. That Those are what gets absorbed into circulation and that is what your cells, your periphery, end up seeing. Knowing that it doesn't increase connective tissue synthesis, I remain skeptical. I know there'll be people in the comments who will go crazy. When there is disagreement in the literature, I tend to default to the most tightly controlled, well done studies. 
And thus far, the most tightly controlled, well-done studies show no effect. And so I am erring more to the side of the very objective research outcomes showing no effect. I can be swayed based on new evidence. Now, if you like collagen supplementation, if you say, well, I take it, my skin feels younger, I get less injuries, well, hey, go ahead and take it. But right now, me personally, I cannot recommend taking collagen supplementation because as of now, I am very unconvinced by the literature. And collagen is actually a very, 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 it's actually probably the single worst protein that you can supplement with for building muscle. It has the lowest quantity of branched chain amino acids, of leucine, and so it might do something to connective tissue. It appears not to, but it doesn't do anything for muscle protein synthesis. And that's even with dosages up to 25 grams per day, which if you look at things like whey protein, egg protein, even soy protein, pea protein, most plant proteins other than maybe wheat, even 25 grams of those at a sitting has been shown to increase muscle protein synthesis. Conflict of interest, I sell a whey protein. That being said, whey protein has thousands of studies to support its use on increasing muscle protein synthesis, improving body composition, improving strength, and even improving health markers like glycemia and markers of inflammation. So I am very comfortable recommending whey protein. And if you're looking for a high quality whey protein that's easy to digest, check out my whey protein build from Outwork Nutrition. All right guys, hope you liked the video. I'll catch you next week.